Praise God. Once again, we're going to try this again. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praising God once again for another opportunity to just praising the Lord. Because he's so worthy of our praise tonight. And I'm praying this. Give time for a few to come on board and join us tonight. On this beautiful, blessed Sabbath. We're just praising God. Alright, trying to get the cameras focused and everybody else in the eye. Amen. Praising God. Praising God. Praise God. Praise God. Those by way of Facebook, by way of Periscope. Amen. Come on aboard and just get this tonight. I have a message for the people of God. I have a message. It's a message. It's time. It's time that we begin to turn our face back to the wall and begin to hear what the Lord is saying to us. Amen. It's time that we seek His face. Here I come, Lord. Here we come tonight, Lord. In the mighty name of Yeshua, on this glorious Sabbath night, before the closing of this day, and Lord, before we go into understanding, and tonight I'm waiting for others to come and join in, and, but tonight I'm just saying, Lord, I thank you tonight. I thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your power, your anointing. Thank you for breakthrough anointings. Thank you for yokes being destroyed. Father God, tonight as, as I'm calling those to come in, come in, come in, come in tonight because there's a word yet tonight. There's a word from the Lord yet tonight, and and, and, and the closing of this glorious Sabbath we was in a in a glorious uh, uh, service this evening, and uh, didn't get a chance to do broadcast earlier today because we had to shift our timing. Uh, for some of you might be aware that temporarily we're. Uh, relo we're relocating our building. Uh, we had put it out there some months ago that we was trying to raise, or we had to raise uh, $120,000 to secure the property and everything else. And anyways, long story short, in uh, September, uh, we wasn't able to come close to the money by the time we was trying to get it there by October. And uh, they allegedly at the time was supposed to have got a contract to buy the building. So we're temporarily moving, but that doesn't stop us. Uh, we're transitioning and transition, but right now while we're transitioning, it's time to realize that life is transitioning right now. And tonight I want to deal part two of the curses of our Father. Uh, and my Facebook again, uh, somebody had just posted again, about the chip, the microchip that's being put, uh, being promoted in Wisconsin. And, and, and I had somebody ask me about that chip and what I thought about the chip. And, you know, I'm like, well, that's another question. Because we're living in Bible prophecy. And tonight I want to deal with the generational curses of our fathers, part two. I want to deal with this in the weeks to come, and I'm putting together this book, and those of you out there follow me, I pray that you follow me, and I pray that you pray for me, and keep me lifted in prayer as we are uh, working on this book. I'm working on this book. This year, this book, in 2019, the book is going to be released. If I could get this book released in the next three weeks, I'll be, uh, I'll be so excited like never before, because... The people, my Bible said, my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. They're dying from a lack of knowledge. And 
it's time that we come up to another level. It's time we come up to another place in God. Those of you out there right now that's coming in with me, I, I challenge you to tell others to come on and follow us right now. Come on and uh, tap into others and tell them, come on and get in this thing. Uh, tonight, I don't want to be real long. I know the last time I did one last week, I kind of got caught up a little bit longer than what I anticipated. But tonight, I don't plan on being very long with this. I just want to briefly hit this some tonight. And then I'm going to pick up again, try to pick up again tomorrow evening again, part three. And I'm talking about the curses of our fathers, the curses of our fathers. People of God, the Bible says that Jesus said, my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. Knowledge is imperative. One thing I've learned in history is that in school coming up, we were propaganded. We were propaganda. Much of what's in your school books is propaganda that's been designated or dominated by the controlling forces or controlling factors. Before I get much into this, I just want to stop for a moment and say, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, Yahweh, I come before your throne this night on this glorious Sabbath right now, and I pray that those who would tune in by way of Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, Father, those who would tune in even now and those who would come and tune in later, God, Father, I pray that, Lord, that you'll begin to touch their minds, touch their minds, give them a mind to receive, give them ears to hear. Give them eyes to go in and search. Give them a hunger in this hour like never before. Father, that they might know what is your perfect will for our lives. Because, Lord, you said in your word that my people, my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. And, Lord, it's time that we, a people, begin to cry out like never before. Seasons are changing. Times are changing. And, Lord, I just pray. That nothing holds your people back tonight from this night on. From seeking you like never before. Because we've been doing so many things because of lack of knowledge and ignorance. And, and, and we've been losing so many people these last few years. These last few generations. We've been losing so many because of ignorance, of lack of knowledge. But Lord, I pray tonight that eyes will be open. Ears will be open. Minds will be clear to receive. The depth of understanding of his word. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray. And I thank you right now. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to come a little higher. The song said it's time to come a little higher. People of God, it's time to come out of our ways that we've been used to and accustomed. It's time to get ready to come higher, higher in the Lord. Higher. Because I'm here to tell you, He soon returns. I want to start out with quickly. I want to start out for a moment and just say that uh, testimony-wise, uh, that when in the late 70s, when I graduated as a young man out of theological seminary, uh, in my two-year seminary training theologically, there was so much that was taught to me, but it was all being taught to me as I later began to go down the road and realize that much of what was being taught to me was being taught to me out of somebody's book, not just the Bible, Trust me, but it was being taught out of a manual. And, and and just like anybody in school and anybody in college, you can relate with me. You know that when you go to school, you go to school, they say, to learn. To, you know, to learn. My problem is, what are you learning? And who's been teaching you? Because it's time to know the real truth. The real truth of God's Word. Now, we understand that, many of you understand that much of what's taught in school books today does not even begin to crack open, historically, events that transpired throughout history of time. 
Don't even crack it. They don't even begin to break it down. It don't even begin to go scratch the surface. You know, all we know basically is what the Roman or the English culture has dominated into our American society. And yet today we're dominated by what was taught in the school books and what they want us to learn. But my Bible tells me my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. And and, and, and something I've learned some years ago and I begin to tell people is you need to know the five W's. The five W's. The five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. Who, what, when, where, and why. The five W's. The who, what, when, where, and why. Who was he talking to? What was he, what was he talking about? When was this taking place? What era? What, what, what time span? What, you know, where, where, where was the, where was the incident taking place? What country? What, what continent? What, you know, what, 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 what was the uh, customs, you know? And then the why. Why was things being said to us? And, and, and I know that in the weeks to come, and my book that I'm working on is going to really rock a lot of people in, in Christianity, a lot of church folk, a lot of preachers. And, and I lost a lot of folk a long time ago. A lot of folks stopped even uh, worshiping with me because they thought I went off the cuckoo's nest. Well, uh, I, I didn't go off the deep end. I didn't go off the grid. I went into the deep studies of God's word because some things, when I get to reading something, one scripture neighbor is not good enough. See, 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 so many of you, you used to getting in there uh, and, and, and the church, you know, and, and the preacher had you stand up and right away he get ready to read, read the scripture. And, and, and of course, we've come accustomed to uh, acknowledging that uh, to stand up in honoring the word of God. So, you know, uh, when, when you stand up to acknowledge the word of God and they'll read a scripture or two, you know, and then They'll go on to preaching whatever around or they'll take a few other scriptures and, and promote it. But the problem is when we're taking scriptures and we're just promoting it, we're not break, breaking it down or identifying how does it really become ir ir irrelevant to what's being said. Now, what are you saying, Apostle? Well, I want to start out by going to uh, 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 First Peter and... Uh, in First Peter, the uh, first chapter, uh, we find that uh, in the uh, third verse, it starts out by saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fades not away, and reserved in heaven for you. It's been what? Reserved. Where is it reserved? In heaven. Who's it been reserved for? For you. Now, we need to understand uh, I'm pulling up my other renderation right here. Give me a second. Uh, and I'm pulling up the Darby renderation. And give me just one second. And uh, he said, um, Darby translation, translation says, uh, to an incorruptible and undefiled and unfading inheritance is reserved in the heavens for you who are kept guarded by the power of Jehovah God through faith for the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Neighbor, this is the last time. There was just an earthquake the other day in Alaska. Alaska just got hit with an earthquake. Last week, Australia just got hit with flooding water, floods in Australia, fires in California. And I want to deal with this for a quick moment because I was saying uh, 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 when I was in 
theological seminary, you know, there were so many things they taught us and, you know, and, and, and then they would go and I would have questions. I begin to ask questions. They say, oh, oh no, it don't mean that. Or, 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 or don't worry about that. That, that's not what it really means. You know, it, this is what it means. And they would always take me back around to their way of interpretation. Well, as I got older in the Lord, and the more I began to hunger and seek, and the more I began to read the Word of God, and the more I began to hear the Holy Spirit speak to me, I began to hear the Word of God said to study, to show yourself approved, a workman, righteous, one who need not reproach nor reproval, but rightly dividing the Word of God. Now, Oftentimes, my teachers would always say, well, that, that means you take the word of God and you take the word and you take the word and you find another word that backs that up and that, that, that describes it. No, that is not what God's word means. Jehovah God never meant us for, to be ignorant. We need to know the who, what, when, where, and why of everything we study. And we need to understand that we just can't take one scripture and rip it and think it's going to fit us. We need to know why are we under. Now, I know that the church has been promoting for, for, for all the time I came up in it. I was always told that Jesus Christ paid the price, that the curse was broken on the cross. Well, eh, eh, hate to bust your bubble, eh, hate to bust your bubble, but... This scripture was taken out of context because if you understand it, then you understand that, 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 that Jesus can only break the curse when you'll become obedient to his will. Neighbor, you can't do what you want to do. Come on now. That's, that's like a murderer go out here and just willfully kill somebody and say, well, I'm, I'm under the blood. I'm under the blood. I'm under the blood. Jesus Christ saved me. Uh, I, I've got redemption of the blood. So I go out here and kill. Uh, I can kill my, my woman. I can kill my man. I can kill whoever, you know, uh, because I can get forgiveness. I'm under the blood. It's all right. It's covered under the blood. See, neighbor, we can't manipulate God's word to fit us, to make us feel uh, what we want to feel that's going to be best for us. I'm trying to adjust my light so I can see my scripture. So, so we understand, and he goes on to tell us, he said, wherein, that, that he said that salvation be ready to be revealed in the last time. He said, wherein you exalt for a little while, present, exalt for a little while, and present. If needed, put to grief by various trials, that the proving of your faith much more precious than that gold which perishes, though it be tried by fire, though it be what? Tried by fire. Wherein we understand it in the fifth verse, he said, though who are kept by the power of Jehovah God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the time that we need to become revealed. Why? Because right now, neighbor, we've got people all uptight because right now the, they, they are now promoting the chip. Now, I'm going back a little bit. Some years ago, back in the, in the, in the late 80s, as I was in my deep studies and my researches as a young preacher, and I kept locking myself up for long hours and long days a week, I would fast and pray and I would seek things, and I just wanted to know more. Because every time I talked to the church, I was, you know, at one time I used to belong to the Baptist church, and then the Church of God in Christ, and then the Church of Christ, and then I belonged to the First Baptist, and then Second Baptist, and, and Primitive Baptist, and, and you know, I, I tried all these different forms of doctrines, during that time span of my life. And I was struggling because everybody seemed to have the same idea. Everybody want to go to see Jesus. Uh, I oftentimes say everybody want to see Jesus, but nobody wants to die. Everybody want to see Jesus, but everybody don't want to live right. Everybody want to do his will. Now, When I began to search things, it was coming out then that there was, we studied the mark of the beast, that in the last days where, we did, where the mark of the beast would come, the Antichrist was coming, and, you know, it became a big, big question through all them years. One, who's the Antichrist? Two, when, when is the mark of the beast coming? 
Three, what is the mark of the beast going to be? Well, I want to deal with this for a quick moment. Then I'm going to give you some more scripture. One, the chip is out. Now, the chip has been out for a long time now. Uh, your, your, dog, your animals got chipped. They started chipping animals a long time ago, which uh, I don't feel there's a big major harm in chipping your animals because, you know, if something happened, your animal got stolen, your animal got taken, you know, you, you, you'd like to be able to find that animal. But truthfully, people, God, we're, we're not animals. We're not going to get lost that quickly uh, that we need a chip to find us. To identify us, you know, but that's another excuse they're trying to use too. Uh, well, if something happened to you and, you know, they find your body, they can read the chip and know everything about you. Well, I want to deal with something real quick for a moment. I want to throw it out there because some years ago when we used to talk about the chip and we used to talk about what was the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast first was always talked about. And, and, and I want to share with you that at the same time the chip was being developed, for some time now, the spirit of 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 marking their bodies. People suddenly, these last uh, 10, 15 years, now more than ever before, have been running around getting tattoos. It got to such a point that about six years ago or so, the church really, people in the church that grew up in church, born in church, raised in church, suddenly they going out getting tattoos, getting tattoos on their bodies. Because why? The preachers stopped preaching about what is the requirements of the Lord. They begin to spend more time about prosperity preaching. Everybody want to be a prosperity preacher. Everybody want to, everybody want to preach, oh, God wants you blessed. The blessing's coming. You know, it's time to get your money on. It's time to get your money on. You know, <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong. Now, Ecclesiastes, the, the, the Solomon, King Solomon, one of the wealthiest men of the Bible history, tells you that he said that money solveth all things. Now, we understand that that without money, come on somebody, we, we can't, you know, you can't, and think you're going to go get your light bill, your gas bill paid, your car note ain't going to get paid, your mortgage note ain't going to get paid, because you talking about, they're going to look at you crazy and say, yeah, he baba shot too. Uh, when are you going to have the money? <laughs> you know, your, 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 your bill is due, uh, you know, rent is due on the first, mortgage payment is due on the first, you know, and, and, and operating uh, property, you know, oftentimes I find tenants, they, they get that confused. They get a little amnesia. They think that when you say that rent is due on the first, they think that means because you got a grace period, five day grace period, they think they can just wait uh, until the fifth day and pay the rent on the fifth day. But they fail to realize that the, that the, the lease very explicitly states that rent is due on the first. Now, you can't come to to me and start sicking my side. The Lord, oh preacher, the Lord is gonna take care of it, baby. The judge gonna take care of it too, because if you ain't got the money to pay rent. And after your grace period, I'm sorry, because the mortgage company ain't got no grace on my clients. So they automatically hit my clients with a late fee after the second or the third of the month. So they don't give us, the landlords, no grace period. So we can't go talking to the, to the mortgage company, the bank, talking about, the Lord is going to cover this because the, God's going to touch the tenants. Neighbor, let's stop all this foolishness in the name of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. Now, the most hypocritical sinner that don't care about Jesus, an atheist, will sit there and tell you he don't want to do nothing with Jesus, but let, let somebody put a bullet in his behind. And the first place he's hollering is, help me, Jesus. Can somebody pray for my soul? So let's come on out for this stupidness and let's get some instruction and let's get some wisdom. Let's get some knowledge because the word of God said, my people are dying from the lack of knowledge. Knowledge. And right now we are in one of the most crucial time or one of the most crucial seasons of all. Now, everybody running to me, asking me, questioning me, what do you think about the chip? Uh, in Wisconsin, they got this other, uh, this other uh, uh, business out uh, uh, promoting the chip and getting the people to how to take the chip and they're giving them bonuses for getting the chip and all this stuff. Well, 
back here at Thanksgiving uh, because they was trying to get the flu, give you the flu shot or get you get your kids the flu shot. They was giving away free turkeys. Anybody would uh, come and bring your kids or come and get your flu shot. They were going to give you a free turkey. And some of you duck clucks, <laughs> that's right, I said a bunch of dumb clucks, you know, you wanted something free. So you didn't mind going out here and let them inject you with God know only what. Come on. There was just an incident. They just put it on there where, where, where a person died from getting that flu shot. Oh, y'all don't want to go there with me. Slap me, call me blind, crippling and crazy if you want to. See, see, we, we, we worried about one thing, but we're not worrying about another thing. We, we, we're consecrated. We're concentrating on one situation, but we're not focusing on all the other avenues that the enemy is preparing in this last hour, in this last day. So, so we skip on down to First T, uh, Timothy, the eleventh verse. I mean, the ninth verse. He said, uh, "Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who have prophesied of the grace that should come unto you." Searching what or what manner of time that the Spirit of Jesus Christ, which was in them, did diligently, or uh, 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 when it testified beforehand of the sufferings of Jesus Christ and the glory that should follow him. Unto whom it is now revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us that they minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that they have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. The what? That the angels, which things the what? The angels desire to look into. Now, I, I want you to pay close attention because I'm reading out of 1 Peter uh, 1 and, and, and 12. Now, the 13th verse said, Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, become sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought upon you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, this is what I want to deal with. First Peter 1 and 14, as obedient children. Now my Bible tells me that it is my desire. He said, it is my desire. It is Jehovah God, Yahweh, desire that you might prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. But how can your soul prosper, neighbor, if your soul is being manipulated, indoctrinated, and injected into your mind with the wrong form of teachings? See, the problem is, the Bible said, Jesus said, brother, I don't like saying the Bible, but Jesus said, train up a child. Raise up that child in a way that it shall grow. And when it get older, if it depart, if it leave, it will return back because you've instilled that depth of that word in them. Now, earlier today, I, I, I posted, I, I was doing some re, uh, research on my YouTube, and I was doing some different researches. And I, trust me, I don't take everything that's out there on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and whatever else and just run it as if it's the Bible. I, I do research. Anything I search, people God, I do deep research. I keep researching. I don't just use the King James Version. I go and read the Darby. I go and read the Amplified. I go read the International Version. I go and compare it with the New uh, King James Version. Why? Because, first of all, we need to come as a people and identify and understand who wrote the King James Bible. Huh. Uh, see, the King James Bible... I, I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there tonight. I don't, I, I wanna, that's another part I want to deal with. But, okay, let, let me stop for a moment. Let me See, the problem is we've been propaganded. Because all you know, when you grew up, for many of you, you grew up in church. And all you know is what the preacher was preaching. All you know is what the, the, the bishop or the, the pastor or the, the preacher was preaching. All you know is what your mom or dad was teaching you. And then when you get fundamentally to that, they only could teach you what they were taught. And they only know what they were taught. And once again, we're ever being taught, but ever learning, but failing to come to the knowledge of the true and living God, 
Jehovah God through his son, Yeshua or Jesus Christ. So this is why uh, Peter says in, in the 14th verse, he says, as obedient children, as obedient children, hallelujah. Let me slide my Darby verse over here. Uh, 14th verse, Darby said, let me see what Darby, the Darby edition says. As children of obedience, not conformed to the former lust in your ignorance. Now, your King James says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Lust of anything. Anything. Lust of anything. You can lust after money. You can lust after a car. You can lust after a, a, a house. You can lust after an a, a, a apartment. You can lust after furniture. You can lust after that man. You can lust after that woman. You can lust after the same sex. You can lust after... <laughs> there's so many things you can lust after. And you can definitely lust off of money. The problem with uh, people today, the church today, preachers today, we become so money-orientated. We become so money oriented that we're not spiritually doing the people no good because all we want to teach is prosperity. Now, once again, King Solomon said, money solveth all things. Now, we know that in the day and age that we live, you've got to have money to buy food. You gotta have money to buy clothes. You gotta buy money to buy gas. You know, you can't walk up to the gas pump and the gas station to my hika ba ba ba. He da 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 when, when the love of something becomes so much it possesses us, it becomes a form of ignorance because we now become so blinded by the lustful desires of it that we're not foreseeing what is the word of God telling us. So he said, but as which was called you too holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. So now... Going down to the 22nd verse, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping down. Uh, 21st verse says, Who by him do believe in, in Jehovah God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and your hope might be in Jehovah God? Yahweh, seeing you have purified your soul in obeying the truth. Now this is the next point I want to get to. Doing what? Obeying the truth. Now, we're so caught up now worrying about what happens if we got to take the chip. What if they come to the chip on my job? I'm not, right now, I'm not worried about taking no chip because number one, I'm not, I'm not into taking no chip. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into taking nobody's chip. Now, here's the problem. For some of you, now, 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 this is, this is in-depth thinking. Think out the box. Because the enemy already knew that there's going to be some of you that's not going to want to take the chip, just like you don't want to take a flu shot. Out of taking a shot, you don't want to take the shot. So, you know, so they already knew that. This is why I believe very strongly that the enemy has now bombarded the church. He's bombarded the people to begin to what? Go get tattoos all over your body. You done wrote Johnny's name. You you wrote Johnny's name on your breasts, on your butt axe. You know you know you know you know wrote it all. You know we got folk tattooing the boyfriend's name on, on your near your vagina area. You got guys tattooing the woman, some woman's name on their penis. You know, come on, this is a spirit of perversion that is bombarded, and it is not just the world, neighbor. You'd be surprised how many people in the church have come and, and, and have sat down quietly, privately, uh, got married, and, and they have these issues that they were in the church and they did this, but they was, you know, oh, don't let me go there. But what I'm getting to, let's open our minds. Before the chip became popularly talked about, what was one of the things that first came on the market some years and years ago? The barcode. The barcode. And in that barcode, everything that you buy Every box, every every grocery package, it don't have a chip, but it has a barcode. That barcode has the numbers. Do you know your Social Security card is just like that barcode? Your Social Security, your numbers, 
develop and create the beginning of 666. It is the barcode. Your, your, your social security number is your form of identity. It is a barcode that was implanted into America when they began to institute the social security card. So now, barcodes are used when they want to use barcodes to, you know, whatever you want to scan a barcode, you scan it, tells you everything is about that, that package, how much it's worth, that book, whatever you're buying, whatever, everything is information in that barcode. That barcode is nothing about a bunch of ink lines that are printed on that package. Now, here is the concept that you've got to open your eyes. People, open your eyes. Come out the box. You know, let me get my friend, you know. Here, let me, let me, let me help some of y'all tonight. Let me get my little friend here. Uh, this, this is my little Christian. I've been saying he, he my little Christian in the box. See, see, this is like a lot of my Christians. <laughs> See, so, so you run around trying to find a prophet to get you out. But when the man of God or woman of God come along with the truth, you don't want to open your eyes to see the truth. You don't want to hear the truth. You know, and, and, and so you want to become blinded to the truth. But truth is going to set you free. See, he said, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. Now, let me not be ignorant in understanding, but... But if, if the enemy has been able to seduce and beguile most of the church to suddenly begin to get tattoos all on your neck, all on your head, and all in the back of your head, the front of your head, neighbor, don't you know another form of the chip when you don't want to take a chip is going to get it in the barcode stamped in your hand, getting a barcode tattooed in your neck, getting a barcode tattooed on the back of your neck on the palm of your uh, on the wrist they'll 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 implant a barcode so you don't have to just worry about a chip <laughs> come on help me somebody but you need to start worrying about becoming gullible to the lust of a tattoo <laughs> you know you worry about getting Johnny's name off of your breast or you know, or, or 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 Susie's name off of your uh, penis area, or whatever. You know, you don't put it all down here like you crazy. Got an arrow. You know, all this dumb stuff that's out here. You know, you worrying about that getting it off. What are you gonna do about getting the barcode off of you when they come to tell you you can't buy no gas, no food without either the chip or a barcode put in your body part? Oh, come on, help me, somebody. But see, here's here's the worst part. First Peter 1 and 22 says, seeing that you purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you now love one another with a pure heart, feverly, being born again, not of the corruptible seed. Neighbor, it's time to be born again, not of water, not of religious rhetoric, not of somebody's doctrine. Time out for Baptist Church of God of Christ, First Church of God, Second Church of God. The church now, in these last 15 years, have now geared up to become more Catholicism and more idolatrized and more converted to Catholicism practices than it ever was 40 years ago when I got saved. That's right, you heard me. <laughs> and, and along with this spirit of Nazism, because that's what it is, propaganda. See, the devil come to propaganda the church. He's mesmerized a lot of people to think everything is just cool to go along with everything. That's what's wrong with the church now. We got young, we got young folk in the church and we got old folk in the church running around getting tattoos because they think it's cool. It's cool. I need to get this tattoo. It's cool. You know. I, I want to look at uh, John the 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 uh, fourth chapter and, and John the fourth chapter and the twenty. Third verse, Jesus speaking at the woman at the well, he said, but the hour come, and it now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. There is generations of lies. What does it say? John 4 and 23. But the hour come, and it now is, when the true worshipers 
shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, now does, does that mean that, that we can tell a lie? That we can just ignore the, the, the truth of God's word? Didn't I just read to you that first Peter said that having, uh, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be good works. Huh? That's first Peter, uh, 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 the second chapter. He said, having your what conversation honest among the Gentiles? How can you be honest among the Gentiles when you're acting just like the Gentiles? You telling lies just like them. You just joined in everything they do and you doing it. See, here's the problem with the propaganda. We have been doing stuff out of ignorance. Go back to first, uh, first Peter 1, 14 verse. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. The former lust of ignorance. Jesus was dealing with this because at the time at the woman at the well, he already talked to her. He broke it down to her. He spit that, he spit that thing out to her real quick and let her know who he was. Cause he said, he, he backing up a little bit, uh, 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 he, he broke it down to, he said, uh, in other words, to let him, let her know who he really was, he began to tell her, go bring your husband. She said, well, hey, I had, I had no husband. Why? Because the husband that she was with was not her husband. She was shacking with the old boy. <laughs> she was shacking and Jesus bust that game out and said, hey, you know, that, that's right. You said it right. That's not your husband. You've been married several times and divorced several times. And now the man you with, you shacking. But you call yourself religion. You know, so so Jesus said to her in the 21st verse, he said, Jesus said, and woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. For you worship, you know not what, but we know what we worship for. The salvation is of the Jews. But Jesus went on to say in the 23rd verse, but the hour come, and the hour is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. For Jehovah God is spirit, and they that do worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Man worships the Lord through and by his personal spirit, which is moved upon by the Holy Spirit. But if the Holy Spirit cannot tell a lie, I ask you tonight, what spirit or what perversion or what ignorance is guiding or moving your spirit. Hmm. This so woman said unto him, I know that you are the Messiah, which is called Christ. He said, when he is to come, he'll tell us all these things. And Jesus said unto her, I who speak unto you, I am he. And upon this, his disciples uh, marveled that he talked with this woman because of her condition, her sinful condition. Now, here's the thing I want to deal with. Go to 1 John. 1 John, the fifth chapter. Because I'm dealing with the curse of the fathers, part two. The curse of the fathers. See, if you go back in the Old Testament, the word God told us very explicitly, don't go marking your bodies like the heathens. Don't go marking all over and don't be cutting on yourself like them heathens. Do not pick up the ways of the heathens. The church today, neighbor, has been propagandly influenced by the spirit of Catholicism like never before. See, what we don't understand is that when the Roman Catholic Church began to create the King James Version, it was already dominating Rome. It already empowered Rome. It was empowering the minds of the people. And it did not want to allow the people to know the truth. So it scatters a lot of its stuff. It's hid a lot of stuff. And it's taken a lot of stuff out of the Bible. Now, I was always told coming up, don't worry about what you don't know. Don't worry about what you got. Don't worry about what you ain't in the book. Because if it ain't in there, you can't be judged by it. Well, that's a lie. Because the Word of God said, to study to show yourself approved, a workman righteous who need not reproach, no reproval, but rightly dividing the word of God. Neighbor, you cannot rightly divide the word of God by go take a, a, a scripture here or take a scripture there and try to make it fit because that's what you wanted to do. Because that's what the church is doing today. 
We're, we're, we're taking all types of scriptures. We're combining them rather than understanding the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. Now, I've been telling this for a long time, back in the late 80s, and, and my pastor at the time that was living uh, would call me. She said, son, you're, you're way before your time. She said, you're, you're, you're promoting truth that these people can't handle. She said, you're going to lose a lot of people because they, they're not going to accept everything you're teaching them. They're not going to handle everything you're telling them. She said, you know, I, I, I've been reading some of this stuff. I've been searching some of this stuff. And she said, you know, a lot of stuff is going to come. She said, but it's not coming now. She said, I don't know if it's going to come in my time, in your time yet, uh, uh, if either one of us is going to see it. But guess what, neighbor? We talked about the mark of the beast. We talked about one day back in the early 90s. We It was talked scientifically about them designing a chip. They were talking about scanning barcodes and putting barcodes in people. Well, guess what? They've been started out implanting bar, uh, the barcodes. Now they've moved up to the, to the computerized chip. They're putting chips in the people. And, 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 and just like your church folk run down and you go out and you get you some tattoos all over your body thinking it's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, it's going to be the same ones that's going to be quick to take that chip because you're going to get hungry. You're going to want to buy some gas. You're going to buy some stuff. And you ain't going to be able to get it because they're going to tell you, nope, you ain't got the chip. And now what you going to do? Neighbor, we are moving fast, not slow, quickly into the last era of Christ before he comes back. Now, I, I, I read in the word of God in, in 1 John, the fifth chapter. Uh, this was in about A.D. 90. Uh, this was after uh, Jesus Christ had already descended. This was not in A.D. 90. And we find it said that uh, 1 John 5 and second verse said, I mean, first verse says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, Jehovah God. For the word, believeth, is not mere intellectual accent, but it's an actual fact of us becoming re rebirth into him by becoming part of him. Because once again, remember, to be part of him, we've got to let go of our ignorance, our lack of knowledge, our, our, our concept of lust of things out here. I, 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 in my lifetime, I've had a lot and I've lost a lot. And I learned that it doesn't matter. It's about, can I make it to see Jesus? I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I don't want to hear him. when, when I don't want to get before my time and I don't want to enter when he calls that last call. And we ain't talking about the last call for alcohol. We're talking about the last call when he comes to swoop up and everybody. The Bible said in the last day, he's going to return. He's going to swoop up the rest. And every Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But Jesus himself said, when I return, when I return, there'll be a great multitude that will stand before me. And as I stand to judge the quick and the dead, he said, many are going to stand before me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy? Didn't I preach good? Yeah, didn't I take down the, the walls of the church? Oh, can somebody, didn't I sing good? Didn't I preach well? Didn't I lay hands on the sick? And didn't they all recover? Didn't signs, miracles, and wonders follow me? Oh, come on, help me now. Stop being ignorant, people, God. It's time we stop being ignorant to the devil's devices. It's time we need to begin to search the word of God and know that the word of God will set you free. The curse of the fathers is upon our generation. Now more than ever before. Everywhere we look, we got our young people being, being murdered. We got people being shot. We got the other day, just in, in Chicago, three different people in, in their 50s was just stabbed and cut and killed. Why? Because the curse of the fathers is upon this generation. You say, oh no, oh no, apostle. The Bible said that, that Jesus paid the price and the, and the cross and he, he, he destroyed the curse. Well, first of all, propaganda made you believe that it was a cross. 
the Catholic Church took the word stake, converted to the word cross, because that was forming their image that they've idolatrized from, from, from history. So, once again, Jesus didn't die on the cross, neighbor. He, he hung on the stake. He blood hung on the stake. The Bible said that Jesus said that if you're obedient, if you're obedient, you eat the good of the land. If you obey me, then I'll break the curse because you see, you see, it's like you can't go out here and kill somebody, go to jail and get back out with a free, get out of jail free ticket. There's no such thing as, uh, you just, you know, you just murder. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get out of jail pass. I, I get out of jail. No, come on. Jesus Christ did not die and rise again to pay the price to break the curse of our ancestors off of our life for us to be foolish and ignorant and go back as, as Peter says in 1 Peter 1 and, and, and 14. He said, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance or in your ignorance. Ignorance is a fool of nature. Ignorance is have us bound. Why? Because our fathers, our ancestors, our, our father's fathers, have cursed us with a cursed neighbor. We have been cursed and we've not broke this curse because the, the, the Old Testament says that, that Daddy God said, because I could not swear by nobody else, I swore of myself. He said, I cannot tell a lie. Now, the book of Malachi says that, he said, uh, in the book of Malachi, he said that, 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 that the curse was going to fall upon these generations. Let, let me go there for a moment, and I'm going to come back. Let me, let me look at my time, Lord, how much time I got. I'm not trying to be too late tonight at the closing of this Sabbath. Uh, in Malachi, the second chapter, 397 B.C., Jehovah God rebukes the priests and warns them of judgment. He said, and now, O oh, you priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and you will not lay it to your heart, to give glory unto my name, said Jehovah God, the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will car curse, uh oh, and I what? And I will curse, uh oh, what? No, 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 he didn't say that. No, wait a minute. God, God loves me too much. He loves us too much. That's why he sent his son to take away the curse. So guess what? You could go back and do what you've been doing anyways. You know, I'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. He said, eh, 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 eh. so he said, if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to your heart, to give glory unto my name, Jehovah, God, the Lord of hosts said, I will even then send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I've cursed them already because you do not lay it to your heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed. Uh-oh. I will spread dung on your face, even the dung of your solemn feasts. And one shall take you away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you. That my covenant might be with Levi, said the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace. I gave it to him for the fear wherewith he feared me. And was afraid before my name. But the law of truth. Uh oh, help me somebody. Malachi 2 and, 2 and 6. But the law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. And did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. For he's the messenger of Jesus Christ and Jehovah God of hosts. A verse. He said, but you've departed out of my way. You've caused many now to stumble at the law. And you've corrupted my covenant with the Levites, said the Lord Jehovah God of hosts. Therefore, have I also made you contemptible and base before the people? 
according as you have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. You've been what? He said, y'all been partial. <laughs> y'all, y'all, you know, sound like a lot of church preachers today. They're partial. Well, the, Jesus loves you. It's all right. He loves you. He just don't like the sin, but it's okay. That, that reminds me. Paul said, do we continue to sin? Paul, who grew up in Rome, who, who, who was partakers of all the Roman festivities and all the Roman traditions. He, he held on to the Roman lust. He carried out all the Roman pagan, uh, practices and worship who later, uh, uh, who later was born of the spirit of Jehovah God on the way to Damascus. He, 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 he got lost his sight and he gained his sight because he was chosen by Jehovah God to be a spokesman for the people because who could tell the people to come out of their idolatry? None better than somebody who what, as Peter says, as obedient children, fasten yourselves according to the former Lust of your ignorance. Paul said, there was a time I was ignorant. There was a time I was foolish. There was a time I did all this stuff. Hey, he said, but, hmm, go read it for yourself. Go read Galatians. Paul said, oh, foolish Galatians. I'm going to pick this up again in my next part. Uh, oh, foolish Galatians. Paul said, who has bewitched you? Who has fooled you? Who Who's put a spell on you? We're going to get into that. Another part coming up this week. Who's bewitching you? Who's put a spell on you? Got folk now in the church, they look more like the Catholic Church and the Pope. They look more like Chester and Molester. No wonder people don't want to come in. It's nothing but a, 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 a glamour show. Show and tell. Folks up here doing all kinds of stuff. Look what he said. He said, but we love him first because he loved us first. First John. First John said, but we loved him first because he loved us first. Now, Jesus said in 1 John, back to 1 John 4, I'm jumping, I mean, 1 John 5, I'm jumping a little bit because I don't want to be too much time tonight, but I want you to go back and pick these scriptures up and read them for yourself, people God. 1 John 5, 1 says, Whoever believes that Jesus is Christ is born of Jehovah God, and everyone who loves him, who begot loves him, also is begotten of him. Second verse, By this we know, that we love the children of Jehovah God. When we love Jehovah God, now this ain't me. And do what? Second verse, go back and go get your Bible. I don't care. It, it, you want me to go get you the, uh, uh, do you want me to go get you the, the, here, let me, let, let me go get the, um, let me pull up the, uh, pull up here, uh, in, in in the Darby edition, let me see if Darby says it any different for y'all. First John and fourth verse. And Darby says, Hereby know you the Spirit of God, Jehovah God, that every spirit which confesses Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of Jehovah God, and every spirit which does not confess Jesus Christ come in the flesh is not of Jehovah God, and that is the power of the Antichrist. Woo. Now let's back it up. First John, I'm sorry, yeah, first John, the fourth chapter. I'm sorry, I jumped back to the fourth. Let me jump back to first John five. My computer's jumping with me here tonight. But that's, that was good too. Uh, 1 John 4 and 2 says, Hereby we know the spirit of Jehovah God. For every spirit which confesses Jesus Christ must, in the flesh is of Jehovah God. And every spirit which does not confess Jesus Christ comes in the flesh is not of Jehovah God. And this is the power of the Antichrist of which we have heard that is to come. And by now it is already in this world. He said, For you are of Jehovah God, children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in this world. That's 1 John 4. Who's greater? He's greater in you than he that's in this world. For this reason, they speak as the world. He said, for this reason, they are of the world. For the reason, they speak as the world. And the world hears them. But we are of Jehovah God. And he that knows Jehovah God hears us. And he who is not of God, Jehovah God does not hear us. From this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of air. 
People of God, it's time to know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, that's 1 John 1 and 1 John 4. Now, let me go to uh, 1 John 5. I was reading the Darby. Let me slide back down here. 1 John 5. And I'm going to slide over to the second verse where I was at. For you, I want you all to write this down. Everyone that believes that Jesus Christ is begotten of Jehovah God, and everyone that loves him is begotten, loves him also. Him that is begotten of him, hereby we know. Hereby we know. Hereby we know. Let me slide over a little bit. Bear with me. That we love the children of Jehovah God. When we love Jehovah God and keep his commandments. When we do what neighbor? Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Now, how are you going to keep his commandments? Now, 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 if you, if, 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 if you say that, that Jesus Christ died on, on the cross, as you want to say it, because that's what the Catholic Church taught our ancestors to believe, they believe, they taught us to believe a propaganda. Propaganda is they made you believe that it was a cross. Jesus did, if you do historical research as neighbor, and you do biblical researches, Jesus did not die on a cross. He died on a stake. He hung and bled. Now, now, there's a reason why I'm trying to interpretate that it's not a cross is because down the road I'm going to show you that the curses of our forefathers are bearing a strong notation on us today is because, you see, it's just like Hitler when he took over the Nazi regime. Some years ago when Hitler took over, he destroyed all documents. He took everything from the people, anything that was knowledgeable for them to know or study and know something more to be truth. And he began to feed. And guess what he did? He began to kill those that came against him. The very same thing, people of God, the Catholic Church, history will tell you that the Catholic Church also did the same thing. It began to come against the true worshipers of Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and they began to kill them. Either you joined them or you was killed. This is why down the road we find that the spirit of passivity is upon the church. The spirit of Catholicism is strong in the church. And because Jesus Christ is soon to return, and the papacy itself, the Pope himself, has recently been wrote an article in the newspaper overseas. Do some research, people, God. You'll find out it's true. The Pope himself, not too long ago, has recently released a newspaper article, and he's writing a book. <laughs> he's Everybody's writing a book. That's why I got to get my book out here. But the Pope is writing a book. And in his book, people God, he's destroying the Catholic Church. Y'all don't want to go there with me. He, he, he's bringing down the Catholic Church. He's actually denouncing a lot of stuff that was once doctrinated through thousands of years of teaching. He's now revealing the truth. You know why? Because the book of Revelation said when, when, when the Antichrist come. He's going to come and have to devolve. He's going to have to. He's going to have to devolve certain truth. If he did not bring out certain truth so you to learn, how can he fool you? If he don't get you to believe certain truth, how can how? If he don't begin to rather reveal certain truths and certain facts that are true, how can he be mesmerize you to believing the lie? Now, let's go back to Jesus Christ. First John 4, 5 says, By this we know that we love Jesus, we, that we know that, rather, we, we, we know that we love the children of Jehovah God when we love Jehovah God and keep his commandments. Neighbor, what did Malachi say? Malachi, Jehovah God said, he said to the priests, and now, oh you priests, this commandment, it starts with you. It's got to start in the house of God. 
neighbor, we are cursed with a curse. We are under a curse because our forefathers, out of their foolishness, out of their lack of knowledge, out of their pure ignorance, when I say pure ignorance, is because there were some of them then, like it is today, that they know the truth, rather they knew the truth, they study to know the truth. Like many people today, I will reveal much truth to them. I will show them biblically. I will show them scripturally. I will show them historically. Where many things that are going on in the church today are full of the Antichrist. They're full of Catholicism practices. That they're taking us to hell in a handbasket. And you know what they've told me for a long time? Well, Apostle... I just don't see no harm. That's what grace is all about. His grace is there. His mercy is there. He loves us no matter what. Yes, neighbor. And Jesus said, when I return, everybody is going to stand on the day of judgment. Those that ain't been judged already are going to stand. And he said, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that I am the Lord. I am Yeshua. I am Jesus Christ. I am the Lamb of God. And that he that loved me must keep my commandments and stop telling a lie. I've been telling it out here. People tell a lie club. People tell a lie. PTL. People tell a lie club. The church is full of joining the same club. I don't care if you're Church of God of Christ. I don't care if you're the, the Church of the First Rock. The Church of the Third Rock off of Mars, uh, your, your, your uh, Church of God in Christ, uh, your First uh, Church of Christ, uh, your, your Church without Christ, <laughs> uh, your you Heaven Only No Church or your Heaven Bound Church, whether you're sanctified, crankified, dipped in the fire, rolled over twelve times, jumped back up and speak in twelve different tongues. Fact still remains: most people observe Sunday school. Your, your Sunday school teachers or your pastors go down to the same bookstore, buy the same Sunday school book that was created, written, authorized, doctrinated, theorized, the, the, theatrically written by the scholars that now give to each church. They don't care about your denomination, but they're slowly feeding you a form of propaganda. Now don't get me wrong, everything in, you know, don't get me wrong, everything in, in the Sunday school books, and everything is, you know, there's there's a lot of truth in a lot of stuff too. Don't get me wrong, I'm not, ba ba I'm not bashing Sunday school books. What I'm bashing is the doctrines that's behind the book. It's just like Jehovah's Witness. When they come to your door, Jehovah's Witness, they come to your door, and they got a magazine. I'm trying to find me a magazine. They, they, you know, they, they, they come. Here we go. They, 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 they all come knocking at your door. Oh, how you doing? Hi, how, how you feeling? Uh, my name is just James, or my name is John, or hi, my name is Mary. And I, I just wanted to share with you today a nice magazine, a nice article. See, people go. On. I told you when I started this broadcast earlier. I'm trying to watch my time, Lord. No, I'm. Trying to see, help me, Jesus. Okay, Lord, how much time? Okay, uh, uh, I'm trying not to be very long tonight. I, last week I picked this up and it got a little longer than what I wanted to. I'll pick this up in another part. But anyways, let me let me. I have a history. I was born as a Jehovah's Witness, or at least I was born as a little kid, indoctrinated in Jehovah's Witnesses teachings. And I tell my story is that. Uh, when I was about seven years old, going to be eight, we was going on the way to the Kingdom Hall on a Sunday morning. And uh, at, a, at the traffic light, my dad stopped and he said, Hey, son, what are you planning on being one day? Have you ever thought about what you're going to be one day when you grow up and graduate and get out of school? I'm sitting in the back seat, you know, I'm just... I, at that age, I had dreams. There was a lot of things I couldn't share with people. I couldn't share with them because they didn't understand who I was. And at that moment, I looked out the window and I saw this preacher on this church and he was shaking hands and hugging people as they was coming in. And all of a sudden, out the clear blue, I said, I want to be just like him. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, my dad slammed back on his brake, 
reached back, hauled back, almost slapped all my teeth out of my mouth and said, boy, long as you live, don't you ever let me hear you say you want to be like them. He said, man, them, them a bunch of holy rollers, a bunch of folk shouting. Around. And from there, he began to tell me when he was in a, a story, when he was in the service and, 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 and they came to town and he, they was on a, a leave or something. They came to town and they was going out in town. Some of those others were going out getting drunk. And anyways, they came along this, this uh, storefront church. And uh, as they walked in the storefront church, the preacher was preaching and Anyways, his story was that these folk were shouting and they were singing and they was praising and all this good stuff. And his story was after a while, the preacher got done preaching. He got to praying for folk and folk were falling out. And they were speaking in all these unknown language. And some folk was rolling around and falling in the walls. And anyways, my dad and mom divorced when I was about eight years old when she committed adultery, left the chat, uh, left Jehovah's Witness Church. And my dad ended up raising me. And... Uh, I went through a lot of abuse at, 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 with my dad at the age of 12 and 13, 14. And I went through a very abusive relationship with my dad. Uh, he, a lot of things, I guess, he was taking it out on me. Uh, anyways, long story, I left home when I was 15 and a half. And I ran away. And I stayed gone and I began to raise myself. And it, Anyways, when I got to be about 17, I was finishing high school. But I had to take care of myself. I started messing with drugs and selling drugs and a lot of different things I was doing. And I left God completely. And uh, when I was about 21, I had an incident that took place. And I was in an accident. They had to take me to the hospital. Somebody tried to kill me. And I was about to be almost be 22. And, uh, of course, prior to that, the, the Lord had been dealing with me. I've been getting dreams, getting dreams. And I was saying, man, I got to leave these, I got to leave that marijuana alone, man. That, that Acapulco go was getting too much and popping them pills with his show enough, you know. And I was blaming a lot of stuff that was going on as if it was because I was having an after effect of getting high. But really what it was, people God, was the Holy Spirit was dealing with me because he spoke to me in that hospital room. He said, son, when the doctor said, you, you're about to die. There's no, you've lost so much blood. There's nothing we can do for it. They had cut my main uh, artery in my in my hand in the fight. And anyways, uh, I told them just sew me up, and they argued with me. I refused to take any more medication, and I made them sew me up. And long story short, while I'm sitting there, I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to me, and He said, "I've called thee from the seed of your father and from the womb of your mother. I've called you as a prophet for this nation." He said, "I've allowed you to live because there's a work that you must do." And from that point on, people of God, I began to break my neck wanting to find God. And for the next couple of years, I went from this church to that church. And I got a lot of stories I'll tell about that down the road. But anyways, it was down the road after I came out of the logical seminary. I was in my early 20s, middle, uh, beginning 20s. I came out of, I went into the logic. Theological seminary because I wanted to know more about truth and you know and when I came through all that I went through understanding there's a lot of propaganda much propaganda has been birthed in the church now I'm able to go back and research history I'm able to now go and deep deeper and deeper and deeper of who what when where and why now people of God the word of God said in First John five. He said, for this is the love of Jehovah God, that we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments, for his commandments are not grievous. Neighbor, if he did not want us to keep his commandments, and if he did away with the commandments on the, on, as many of you say, the cross, as, as, as his story would tell you, he was a tree, the stake. If Jesus paid the price and broke the curse, and destroy the commandments that you no longer have to abide by them, then why is it that, that Jesus is saying in 1 John that the love of Jehovah God is that we keep his commandments because his commandments are not grievous. Because they understand the fourth verse, he said, for whoever is born of Jehovah God overcomes this world. Neighbor, how can you overcome the world when you're trying to look just like the world? Got folk all up in the church 
I ain't talking about folk just coming into church, been out of church, never came to church, didn't grow up in church, you know, and you, you got tattooed down and you was in the world because you didn't know nothing better. No, because Daddy God already told me uh, some years ago, he said, they're coming in with tattoos. They're going to have piercings all over. They're going to have tattoos all over. He said they, they, didn't, they, they didn't know nothing about church. They didn't know about religion. They, they had parents that were atheists. And so he said, get ready for it in the last hour. Many are going to come wanting to seek the truth. I've been prepared for that to come. But I'm talking about the church folk. I'm talking about the ones that Peter said in 1 Peter uh, 1 and 14. He said, as obedient children, no longer fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. I'm talking about the former ignorance. The former ignorance of, of, of no longer hearing the word. I, I put it out there on my Facebook earlier today because I was doing some research earlier this morning in my prayer and study before my evening service uh, this evening. I, I was doing research and I put it out there because I found a YouTube. And and it, it's Farrakhan. Now trust me, I've been knowing Farrakhan all these years and a lot of goofiness. And I remember there was a time coming up in ministry, Farrakhan tore the church apart like crazy. you know. But then I remember some years, a few years back, he caught, I think it was pancreatic cancer. And he was about to die. And I forget offhand who the preacher was, but there was a preacher that, that came and ministered to him. And Farrakhan, the Lord healed Farrakhan of that cancer. He'd been cancer-free ever since. But he changed his, his, his teaching. He teaches more about Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong. I'm not upholding him because there's a lot of messed up mess. There's a lot of messed up mess that he teaches. There's a lot of messed up mess. Church of God of Christ teach a whole lot of messed up mess. Church of Christ teach a whole lot of messed up mess. Sanctified folk teach. You know, all this stuff. Who been teaching you? Who been preaching to you? Nobody's studying the word of God to know the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. Why are you doing half the stuff you do? Half the stuff that's being performed in the church today is a form of Roman Catholicism practices. We're ignoring the truth. We're blindly ignoring it. Farrakhan said in his message, go ahead and check my Facebook. I posted it out there. Put that video. It's on YouTube. Farrakhan's talking about Christmas. <laughs> Woo! I thought I could tear it up. And I thought I'm going to tear it up. Y'all need to go hear Farrakhan. How can we claim that this season that we're going in is all about Jesus when Jesus had originally no origination in this? First of all, if Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, and let me stop all y'all little religious people. Well, it don't matter. We, it doesn't really matter when he was born as long as we, we're celebrating when he was born. Eh? Bible scholars, study your word. Part three, part four, I'm going to deal with this. When was the proximity of when Jesus was born? Do we really know? Yes, the Bible does tell us. Yes, the Bible does give us some knowledge and insight about the approximate time, the year, the era, the month, and everything when Jesus was born. I'm not getting into that tonight because right now I'm dealing with the disobedient curse of the fathers that are still playing the generation today. People of God, we're still under a curse. You say, no, I don't believe that, Apostle, because the Bible said that Jesus paid the price on the cross, taking away all the sins of man. Yes, he died upon the stake. He bled. He took your curse. The curse of our fathers. He took the curses of our fathers. He took every disobedient thing that our parents had did. Our forefathers. Our great, 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 great grandmothers. Our great, 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 great granddad. He took every sin of generations. He hung it upon that stake. He bled. He died. He went down into hell and the grave for three days and three nights. And he rose up victoriously and took place back in heaven by the side of the Father. And he began to make intercession with the saints for us. But here's the key. Fourth verse. 1 John 5. For whoever is born of Jehovah God overcomes this world. And this is the victory that overcomes this world, even our faith. 
He who is overcomes this world, but he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, how are you going to say you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but yet you go back to your pagan roots? How can you say that Jesus Christ bled, hung, bled, and died, rose again for your sin, when you keep going back to your forefathers' sin, allowing the sins of your forefathers to keep coming back on you now? How? How can you allow the sins of your forefathers to be rebirthing us? How? This is how. Do some history. How much time I got? Oh, I'm about to wrap this up. History will tell you that when, when, when the Nazi, when Hitler wanted to take control of the, of the Jews, and he wanted to take control of the land, History will tell you that Hitler would go in and he killed off all, first of all, he began to kill off all the males. Same thing Pharaoh did in the Old Testament. To get rid of the disciples of God, to get rid of the disciples of Jehovah God, Yahweh, Pharaoh had all the true worshipers killed. In Jesus' time, those that no longer would follow the pagan pharaoh of that era was crucified. Same thing with the Nazis. For Hitler to take control over the land, he had to eliminate, he had to eliminate the people that had dominant control. So how did he do it? By taking a group of men and women and, and propagating them to believe his way of teaching, his way of thinking. And so when Hitler did this, he now dominated and controlled the mind factor. He began to control and dominate the facts. He did away with, the, the he hid, hid the real truth, and he began to give people what he wanted them to believe. That's the very same thing that has happened with us today from the Roman Catholic Church. Right now, you can do some research, do some research. You'll find that even right now, the Pope that is in position has widely begun to proclaim that one, December 25th is not Jesus Christ's birthday. Two, that the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church had created this day from the birth of Nimrod, which was later named Baal, which was birthed down as their pagan God. There are even some more writings that the, that the new Pope has exposed that they he's, had even, he's even been written, having been noted to be wrote in a newspaper article and in his book that they worship Lucifer the God or the angel of light. That they worship the sun God. The sun goddess it gets deep with them. If you get in them they will, they, their history will tell you they worship Nimrod's mother. Now here are the churches today. We're in 2018. Neighbor, this is the first time, help me, in 800 and, don't hold me to it. I think it's, I don't have my notes in front of me. I wasn't ready to go this way. Holy Spirit help me. I think it's 863 years. This makes 863 years since December has been recorded having five Saturdays and five Sundays. Now, go do some research. The Chinese calendar, they call it the year of multiple blessings. Because in the month of this December, it's been you won't see another December with five Saturdays and five Sundays for another 800 and some years. And trust me, neighbor, I doubt very truthfully if anybody here is going to live to see another 100 years. 
Because as the way of the mark of the beast is fastly approaching, as the way the church is taking uh, uh, tattoos on their body, church folk running around getting everything tattooed just like the world. They're lusting after tattoos. They're lusting after traditions. And now the church is now trying to get all adorned in their beautiful garments, their 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 robes and, and their kufis and their fish hats, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 everything is formulating to or going to becoming push what is called the one world order. One world order. And that is what the Catholic Church has been deemed to do for all these centuries. Neighbor, it was in the 4th century A.D., 4th century, four centuries after Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, the Roman Emperor Constantine who was the high priest and the king of the land at that time, deemed a law, deemed a law that said, he first he became a, a he first became a, a Christian. History will tell you, he first became a Christian. There was no such thing as a Christian. He first became a worshiper of Jesus Christ with the rest of worshipers of Jesus Christ. History will tell you. Then he later deemed them Christians because he wanted to do. He didn't want to lose nobody. I don't want to go there tonight. That's going to be another part of this series that I'm going to be teaching on. The curses of the fathers. What you need to follow with me, people of God, we're under a curse. The curse cannot be broken by Jesus Christ if you keep going back willfully Picking up ancestral doctrines, ancestral teachings, ancestri an ancestral rituals, and doctrines of your forefathers. We cannot keep allowing the spirit of passivity to fall upon us. We're dying like blind mice. Remind me of a song when I was a little kid in school. We three blind mice, three blind mice. They ran, they, I think they, uh, I don't remember it all. They, they all ran off to the farmer's wife, <laughs> you know. Uh, three blind mice, you know, remind me of another one uh, I used to remember coming as a little kid. Something about the, the, the three monkeys. The church is like the three monkeys. They don't want to see no, hear no, and they don't want to speak no. Nobody want to touch it. But here's the word of God. But Jesus said in 1 John 5, but he who overcomes this world is he that believes in Jesus Christ. First John said, he said, but who, what believes in Jesus Christ? For this is he who came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Now what you got to understand is right here. Here's, I'm going to pick this up at another time. I'm just, I'm putting some nuggets out there tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm sowing some seed to make you get hungry. The church for, for all the years I've been sanctioned into the church, they had me always believing that 1 John 4, I mean 1 John 5 and 5, when it speaks of who overcomes the world, he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, and then the 6th verse saying that this is he who came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by the water and the blood, and this is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Now pay attention, the Spirit is what? Truth. But the church has been making us believe that when he spoke of the water, meaning the water baptism, that's another Catholicism, Roman Catholic teaching. I'm not dealing with it tonight. What I'm trying to show you is, people of God, on this glorious closing of this Sabbath, the Roman Catholic Church, for centuries, since A.D., the 4th century A.D., when the Roman Emperor Constantine who was a sun god worshiper who began to begin to promote the Catholic Church, who dominated and controlled us, and began to develop their religious rhetoric in us. This is why the King James is so dominant in the church for the last several hundred years, is because our forefathers, neighbor, most of our most of most of our black, as well as many poor Caucasians, as well as Latinos and Hispanics, never had the opportunity to know or have the power to get other type of writings. So all they knew was what the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, was producing. And that was the King James Version. 
I'm not going to go much into that tonight. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get this closed out. I, I, I told you I'm not going to be trying to be very long. To, I, my Sabbath is already closed out. It's after midnight. After midnight. I remember I remember all the way back years ago, boy, it was after midnight on a Friday night and Saturday night. We'd have service. Boy, we'd be 12 o'clock. We'd be shouting like crazy. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. The spirit behind. But anyways, what has happened is, people go, the Roman Catholic Church, because of the lack of of knowledge. My Bible tells me my people, Jehovah God said my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. Now as I get ready to close out, as I get ready to close out tonight, uh, I want to pick up this one scripture and I want to close out. Uh, I want to go to uh, Well, two, two, two scriptures and then I'm closed now. 1 John 5 and 18. 1 John 5 and 18. 1 John 5 and 17 and 18. 1 John 5 and 17 says, All, all unrighteousness is sin. Now, I want to stop right here for a moment. Notice what the 1 John 5, 1 John 5 and 17 says, All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. What is that sin that's not unto death? <laughs> well, it sure can't be people tell a lie club. Because didn't Jesus say that he that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth? So tonight, neighbor, can you really in see the Holy Spirit endorsing a lie? Can you see Jesus Christ sign sealing and decreeing that you telling a lie is okay? Is not a lie a lie? It's time that the church, quote unquote, the Christians, want to be Christians, professing to be Christians, I call them the PTL club. PTL or the people, Christians, telling a lie club. Because every denomination is running around telling the same lie. That lie was birthed to us as little kids. Medical science today will tell you that the formative years of any person is from the age of one to five. One to five. From one to five is when most of our parents taught us how to observe Halloween. They taught us about Santa Claus is coming to town. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you are awake. Oh, goodness sake, you better watch out. You better not tell a lie. Well, how are you going to not tell a lie when he just told you a lie? Because if you take this one tonight, y'all out there tonight with me, y'all out there, I hope y'all getting something out this. Yeah, I got some paper real quick. Write this real quick. Somebody need to write this. I want you to spell the word Santa, S-A-N-T-A. -A. Then I want you to write the word C-L-A-U-S-E. Santa Claus. Now, I want you to write the word Santa Claus. Then right below it, I want in the same piece of paper, I want you to write Satan. S-A-N. I mean, S-A-T-A-N. S-A-T-A-N. Then next, I want you to write C-L-A-U-S. E. <laughs> I was messing with you. Now, later on, I want you to, that, you know, we used to, we used to connect the dots. I want some folk tonight to connect the letters. Now, what you're going to find is going to blow your mind. Because as, as little kids, most of us were taught about Santa Claus. You know, in, in, in the black, you know, some years ago, we had that song came, Santa Claus, going straight to the ghetto. Santa Claus, you know. The devil wanted to get every nationality he can to formulate, to believe the lie versus the truth. So the best way to get you to believe the lie is the same way that the, 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 the Nazi Hitler did. He began to feed the people propaganda. He did away with the truth. He hid the truth. And he began to kill those that came against the truth. Neighbor, the Catholic Church is guilty of thousands of years of what is called bloodbaths. 
For thousands of years, the Catholic Church, go do some historical research. You'll find out the Catholic Church has been running around the whole continent of the earth, the whole earth, going all over the whole earth, going around ravaging, raping, killing, martyring people so they could promote and promote their pagan god, Baal, and the Catholic priest who later, they, they indoctrinated the Pope, the Pope who became the Holy Father. Everything is in transition. I'm going to pick this up on another part of the curse of the fathers. Now, here's the curse. First John 5 and 18. For we know that whoever is born of Jehovah God sins not, but he who is begotten of Jehovah God keeps himself. And we know that we are of Jehovah God and the whole world lies in darkness. And we know that the Son of Jehovah God is come and has given us an understanding that we might know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, even His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is the true and living God, Jehovah, Yahweh, and he is the eternal life. Now, 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Well, Malachi, the second chapter. Go back and read it for yourself and take your time and read it. Because I, 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 and go back and check my other Periscope, my other Facebook uh, last week. Uh, the, the the curse of the fathers. Uh, it was kind of long, but I, I was trying to bring you what, what some call the dark age, the silent age. Uh, there was 430 something plus years from Malachi to, to Matthew that, that the prophets were silent. The, the, the God, Jehovah, stopped talking to people. He didn't know, he had no more prophets. He sent nobody else to re, re, redeem mankind until he sent his son, Jesus Christ. But he sent the prophet John first. But look at what Malachi said. Malachi 2. Malachi 2 says, uh, Yet you say, Wherefore before had the Lord been witness between you and the wife of... Uh, your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife of your covenant. He said, and you did this, and did not he make one, yet he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of your youth, why? He said, For the Lord Jehovah God of Israel says that he hates putting away, for one covers violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. Why? Because at that time they were doing everything under the sun, covering up their sin, putting birds offerings, putting bird sacrifices, putting this on the altar, and they was trying to get uh, atonement from it. But I'm here to tell you tonight, prior to that in Malachi 2, he said, he said in the sixth verse, he said, But the law of truth was in his mouth. Iniquity is not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and iniquity, equity, and he did not, and he did turn many away from iniquity. But the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should speak the law of Jehovah God in his mouth or her mouth, for this is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Neighbor, it's time that we spare not, we cry loud, stop preaching prosperity, stop preaching a prosperity message, stop preaching that it's okay. Like Farrakhan said, how gullible and how ignorant and foolish can we, the so-called Christians, be? You run around, he said, you cut down the Christmas tree, you drag that tree up in your house, you let it dry out, you decorate it, you adorn it, you worship it, you put gifts all underneath it, you put it in your front window. He said, then it dries out and it burns up, catches your house on fire. Now you burn up and then you run out and tell me, oh God, why you let a house burn up? He said, how ignorant can y'all be? Don't you know that that's Nimrod? 
Don't you know that was the God of Baal? Baal was Nimrod. Now, come on. If Farrakhan can go in and research the truth of history and break it down, why should not we be so-called Christians? <laughs> Christians, which we want to spread that word and really determine it means Christ-like when it wasn't really where that word determined came from. I don't want to get there tonight. There's another part I deal with. Y'all need to follow this because, see, I want to break this thing about where Christian came in. And the fact that y'all run around here, Jesus never called you to be a Christian. If you go back to John, the fourth chapter, Jesus called the woman at the well, and he called every one of us that it, the time has come, and it's already at hand, when true worshipers, John 4 and 23, he said, for the tower comes, and the hour is now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Neighbor, how can you worship the Father, Jehovah, God, Yahweh, and Yeshua, Jesus Christ, by telling a lie? Do you think the Holy Spirit will endorse a lie? Somebody better go to Revelation. I'll be picking this up on my part three. Part three, the curse of the fathers, the sin of the fathers. Because part three, I'm going to go in Revelation. I'm getting ready to take y'all to the book of Revelation. See, 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 the other verse. Oh, yeah, don't let me. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to hurry up. I, I'm, I'm not trying to hold y'all tonight. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I ain't sorry. I, I'm glad y'all getting held up. Somebody need to get held up and hear some truth. Uh... I want to go to Jude. I had somebody I had somebody the other day. I was just sharing it with I was preaching the other day. So I was sharing some of this, and somebody I said, "Go to Jude with me." Jude, where 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 is that book at? Jude. I said Jude is the last book before Revelation. Revelation. Wow, I don't even touch Revelation. Man, it, it's deep. We can't handle Revelation. There's a lot of deep stuff in there. You know, it, it, man. I we don't. Our preachers don't even teach on Revelation. I know. They want to preach about prosperity. They want to preach a prosperity message. They want to give you a prophecy and always put a seed. You know, when you sow that seed, when you sow your seed, you get your blessing. But the Bible said, the word of God said, that is my desire. Jehovah God, Yahweh said, it is my desire that thou may prosper. Woo! He didn't say just money wise. Watch him break this thing. Jehovah God said in his word, he said in the New Testament, he said, my son, my daughter, it is my desire that thou might prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Do you think your soul can really prosper? Running around telling all these pagan lies? Going back to Santa Claus. Santa Claus. You up here telling your kids. Then your kids get older and talk about, I saw, I saw daddy in there dressed up in a red suit. He playing like he was Santa Claus. Shout out with the tooth, tooth fairy. Running around telling your kids the tooth fairy gonna take their tooth and give them some money. Then you go from telling that lie to that Santa Claus. You breaking your neck, running around here. And you talking about it's all about Jesus. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, right. If you really got to the truth, people of God, if you really dug down in the scriptures and you got some history, you'd find out that Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th. And stop telling that old messed up heathen lie about where it's all about Jesus. We're just celebrating Jesus. And, and it, we nobody knows when Jesus was born. Yes, we do. Because we know that, I'll pick up this in part three or part four. The Bible tells us that, 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 that the angel Gabriel came to, to Elizabeth and spoke to, 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 uh, uh whoo, hallelujah, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Spoke to Elizabeth and her husband, the high priest, and told them they was going to have a son. Told them his name was going to be John. Then they came and spoke to Mary, the, 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 the Virgin Mary, and told her that she was going to become pregnant with the son Jesus Christ. I'm going to deal with this down the road. <laughs> but but we understand that the Bible tells us, I'm not going in tonight, I, 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 whoo, but the Bible tells us that John, or, or Elizabeth, John, Mary's cousin, first cousin, Elizabeth, John was conceived in Elizabeth 
six months prior to Jesus. So when Mary came to tell, when, when Mary came to tell Elizabeth that the angel Gabriel came to talk to her, she was already six months pregnant with John. So, so the Bible tells us about the time when John was born. So neighbor, all you got to do is go back to, we're going to pick that up on another incident, part three, part four of the curse of the fathers. This is why there's a curse on us. See, Jesus Christ paid a price, people of God. Jesus Christ paid the price that whosoever will. Jesus Christ paid a price. He paid the price that whosoever will, let him believe on me and let him refuse to be of the world. He said, be in the world, but be not of the world. Neighbor, how can you sit there and tell a lie and think that Jesus or the Holy Spirit is going to endorse it because you sitting there telling folk, well, it's all about Jesus. If it's all about Jesus, then go put that 52 inch and that 66, 62 inch television back. Go put that diamond ring that you picked out and put in layaway. Go put that diamond ring back. Go, 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 go get all them gifts and all them toys and stuff you've been buying like you crazy and can't afford it. Can't pay your light bill, your gas bill. You, 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 you can't pay your car, no, can't pay your rent, can't pay your mortgage, and you run around here buying all this junk, talking about, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Christmas. Neighbor, quit telling that lie. Look, look, look what Jude say. Jude says, Jude says, Jude, Jude, four says, for there are certain men that crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to the condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our Jehovah God into lasciviousness. Now this is this 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 writing took place in AD sixty six. AD sixty six. Sixty six after Jesus Christ had went to heaven. Now he said now they come in, sneaking in, turning the grace of our Lord Jesus uh, 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 G, uh, the Lord of our Jesus Christ in the Lacedaemoniousness and denying the only Lord Jehovah God Yahweh and he, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Yeshua he said I will therefore put you in remembrance through you once knew this how that the Lord Jesus Christ having saved the people I, I mean rather no, through rather let me stop. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm trying to rush. Fifth verse of Jude says, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord Jehovah God, Yahweh, having saved the people out of Egypt, afterward then destroyed them who believed not. Whew! And then put what? And put the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had now reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, having given themselves over to the fornication and going after strange flesh. Now I want to stop here for a moment. I, 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 I got I to gotta quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. The fornication that's spoken of people of God is the curse of our fathers. The fornication that's being spoken of here in this verse is not sex outside of marriage. It was fornicating or having sex with the pagan gods. Pagan god worship. They were now going back to the Roman Catholic Church's worship. Baal, they were bringing the tree into the synagogues. They were bringing the tree into their temples. And they were setting them up. And they, history will tell you, they were now beginning to have illicit sex, one with another, one with each other, vice versa. So they are now creating the fornication and now going after strange flesh. Strange flesh. Meaning going after sex with each other. Uh huh. He said, who are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. 
Likewise, also, these are filthy dreamers. They defile the flesh and they speak evil of dignitaries. They speak evil of those who are high priests or high leaders, those who are real prophets of God, prophetesses of God, those who are ready and willing to teach the truth. They will come against us. They don't want the truth told. Don't you know the devil don't want the truth? But Jesus Christ said, before I return, I'm going to bring you that scripture in one of the next teachings. Jesus Christ himself even said, before the Son of Man returns, the Son of Prudential will have his way. And that even Satan will have to tell a certain amount of truth. Why? How else can he begin to deceive the church? If the devil does not begin to manipulate the minds of the teachers to be able to tell the truth and mix the truth with some lies. Thus in turn, allowing the church to become gullible. Woo! Help me somebody. Slap me, call me blind, crippled and crazy if you want to. But, 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 but Jude 9 says, Yet Michael, the archangel, there was no other angel that bear the title of Mark Archangel as recorded, but there are others who were called chief angels. But Michael is the only one of them that was found in Daniel 10, the 13th verse, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, did bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these, 10th verse of Jude, but these <laughs> speak evil of those things which they do not know. Sound like church folk. Well, apostle, ain't nothing wrong with it. We, it's all about Jesus. It's all about celebrating Jesus. Wasn't it's, it's, We're just trying to lift up the name of Jesus. Baby Jesus. Let me tell you something. The Catholic Church has dominated Christianity for so many thousands of years. We've been hoodwinked. We've been hoodwinked, we've been whooped up, we've been boggled down, we've been, we've been lack of knowledge, the books have been taken from us, hidden from us, but Daddy God said, Jesus Christ himself said, before I will return, I'm going to cause knowledge to come to my people. He said, truth is going to be revealed. Before I can come and bring judgment upon the land, I must first allow the truth to be revealed. Revelation, I'm going to deal with that. I told you, y'all need to follow me. Part three, be looking out for part three. And of course, don't forget, when this book come out, the curses of our fathers. The curses of our fathers. See, the Old Testament said that Daddy God said, because I could not tell a lie, I swore by myself. So by that being, Daddy God said, if you refuse to keep my covenant, you refuse to keep my commandments, and you willfully go against me, which they did. He said, now I'm going to put this curse on you. And not only this curse is going to fall upon you. He said, but this curse is going to fall upon the third and the fourth generation of your bloodline that are willfully refusing to serve me. Now, here's the problem, neighbor. What happens when the third and fourth generation of our ancestors, once again, they continue to conform to the propaganda teachings of their forefathers. And once again, they refuse to know the truth. They refuse to follow the truth. And they begin to make folly or, or make fun of the truth. And, and, and they begin to throw stones at the truth. They don't want the truth though. What happens? Does that not third generation now birth another generation? Does that fourth generation now begin to birth another generation? And does not each one of them generations birth another generation and another generation and another generation? And here we are now, once again, we are people who are product of the fourth generation. Some of us are products of the third generation. Some of us are products of the first generation. Oh, help me somebody. We are products of a curse. Because the curse can only be broken. The curse can only be broken by the bloodline of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. When you become obedient to keep his commandments and stop telling your pagan lies. Stop telling your pagan lies. Get you some truth. For the truth, neighbor, will set you free.
Hallelujah, somebody. I know I don't gonna get no hearts and no love, and you know, I ain't gonna get many people gonna say this one out. Folks ain't gonna share this. They'll share uh folk, they're gonna share folk uh eating some some pig. They're gonna show, share somebody eating them them riblets and the piglets and them chitlins and hot sauce on the chitlins, you know, that'll go all over the internet, that'll go all over Facebook. Uh, Periscope, YouTube, it's going to go live everywhere. Chitlins, hot chitlins, and, you know, greens, and, you know, pig feet, you know, uh, 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 we eating the big old ham, and, you know, all this stuff is all over the internet. People will promote all the buying gifts and everything out there. They will promote all this. But when it comes to the truth, the Word of God said, my people are dying. From a lack of knowledge. Let me close out tonight. I, I, I keep saying let me close out. Let me let me close this out. Uh, 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 Jude says. Jude 10 says. But these false teachers. They speak evil of those things. Which they do not know. They implies where fools only rush in. Where angels will not tread. But, but they know naturally. As brute beasts. Jude here refers to these false teachers. As being. In the class of unreasonable animals, unteachable, refusing to hear. You know, uh, it's like a quick example. You can go take a pig and you get that pig out the pig sty, out the, out the mud, and you go wash that pig off. And, and next thing you know, you look up that pig and go right back out to that mud hole and get dirty again. You give your dog a bath, and if you don't get that dog in the house and keep him dry that dog off and get him good and dry, that dog will be wet, and the first thing that dog will do, run back out that door and go get in the grass and get all dirty while it's wet. Form of ignorance. Same thing he said here. Now look what he said. He said, but they know not naturally as brute beasts. He said, in these things, they corrupt themselves. He said, they what? They corrupt themselves. Now, it could be translated by saying, by these things they have now brought ruin, curse, calamity, destruction upon us. This is why our children are being killed. Our bloodline is being wiped out, people of God. Our mothers, our daughters, our fathers, our sisters, our, they're dying. Cancer's eating us up. People are shooting us. They're killing us. They're stabbing us. Nowhere safe because Jesus said before I return, he said peerless times, earthquakes, famines, pestilence. There's an earthquake in just uh, Alaska, flood in, in, in Australia, California. The cities are burning up. There's nowhere left for the people to go. But yet the book of Isaiah prophetically spoke back thousands of years ago when the towers fall and the cities burn in ruin. Neighbor, there was never a time that the city, city of Rome burned. But never like the cities. Rome burned. History will tell you. Rome burned up. But there was never a time throughout history of time. Did the cities burn. We are living in a time where the cities are burning. 911. There was never from, from Genesis to today. There was never what was tall twin towers. But Isaiah prophesied about when the twin towers fall. 911. America had two twin towers. I'm not going there with that no farther because there's some more, there's some more, uh, uh, spiritual as well as satanic behind them twin towers while they were built. There's a reason why them two twin towers was originally built. Just like the, the, the same tower, uh, the peak, pinnacle tower or the penis tower that's, that's in Washington. We're going to get into that down the road. The curse of the fathers. We're going to talk about the Statue of Liberty. Which you really don't even know. The Statue of Liberty overlooking New York and over the ocean. As people come across from the east to the west to America. The Statue of Liberty or the goddess of Babylon. The Babylonian goddess is waving to you with her torch. We're going to go into this. The curse of the fathers is upon us. But our people are blind. The church is blind. Wake up people. Please wake up. It's the midnight hour. It's the midnight hour. And this is the first December in 800 and I think 63 years don't hold me exactly to the date 800 I think it's 843 800, anyways I don't have my note in front of me I ain't got time to do that that this is the first time and they say every 800 something years you will get five Saturdays and five Sundays 
in the month of December. It only happens every 860 some years, I think it is. I'll, I'll pick that up later when I have my notes in front of me. It's important. Why is it important? Why is it important? Five. Wake up, people. Five. I want to spiritually talk real quick. I got to get out of here. I got to close you out. I ain't trying to be this long. Oh, Lord, help me. Please help me, Jesus. Five. Look at the look at the five-fold ministry. Five. There's something important about this month of December. Five Saturdays. Five Sabbaths. And five new days of the week in the last month of this year of 2018 before we go into 2019. Nine means a year of birth. A year of birthing. There's a lot of birthing that's going to take place. Prophetically, a lot of things are going to be birthed. Spiritually, as well as satanically, things are going to be birthed in 2019. Church, you better get ready for it. Let me close out. Woe, 11th verse. Woe unto them, for they have gone to the way of Cain. Woe unto them, concerning the apostasy of the apostates of the Holy Spirit is now saying to them, Woe, woe. Woe, church, for they have now gone in the way of Cain, the type of religious men who believes in God and religion both, who bring them together, the deity of the Roman Catholic Church. Watch this. Why? He said, for they gone up the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a reward. The heir of Balaam, the heir of Balaam, people of God, was that he was blind to the higher morality of, the, of Jesus Christ being shed of his blood. Which Jehovah God maintains and enforces our authority through his sanction of his word and of identifying the truth. Coming under the truth, we come under a covenant. You cannot be under the covenant of Jesus Christ and under the covenant of the curse. Problem is, Jesus said, yeah, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because he said, when you're lukewarm, I'm spitting you out of my mouth. Woe unto them, for they gone unto the way of Cain, ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perish in the gain slaying of Kor. He said, these are spots in your feast of charity. They are feasts with you, when they feast with you, feeding themselves out of fear. They are clouds without water. Carried about with winds. Trees whose fruits wither without fruit. Twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea. Foaming out of their own shame. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things. Saying, Behold the Son. Behold the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly have committed and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He said, these are murmurers, complainers, Walking after their own lusts. Own lusts. Wait a minute. First Peter. First Peter 1. 14. As obedient children. No longer are you fastening yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. Neighbor, it's time to stop being ignorant. Having their mouth speaking great swelling words. Having men's persons in admiration because of their advantage. Meaning, exhorting all these people in great positions. Oh, this is my bishop. This is my archbishop. This is my chief apostle. Neighbor, there ain't no such thing as a chief apostle. There's no such thing as an archbishop in the Bible. Come on and stop with all this foolish rhetoric. Religious rhetoric. It's time we come back to the unadulterated Red line words of Jesus Christ and seek him while he might be found. Because I'm here to tell you, neighbor, the chip is already here. The mark of the beast is coming in. The blood is being shed daily. Our children are dying without knowing that Jesus Christ is the true redeemer and the soul salvation for your soul. Stop getting caught up in this paganistic mess. Come on and turn your hearts back to him. 
Let me share one note and I'm done. I know I've been saying I've been done. I want to deal with this quick note about Bell. Bell. Where's my notes? I got so many notes here. Help me real quick. Lord help. I pray this is message got somebody tonight. I got too many notes. Balaam. Hebrew word meaning is perhaps devouring or devour. He was the son of Beor from the city of Pithor on the Euphrates. He was a diviner whose remarkable history is found in Numbers 22 and 2, through Numbers 24 and 25, through Numbers 31, 8, as in 16. Also, he's spoken of in, in Deuteronomy 23 and 4, Joshua 33, 22 and 24. I mean, Joshua 33 and 22. Also in Joshua 24 and 9, as well as Nehemiah 13 and 2. He's spoken again about in Micah 6 and 5. He's spoken in the New Testament in 2 Peter 2 and 15. He's spoken again here in, in Jude 11 verse. And he also spoken again in Revelations 2 and 14. When the Israelites pitched their tents in the plains of Moab, it was immediately after their victory over Sion and Og that Balak, the king of the Moabites, went and sent an embassy of the elder of Moab to Midian, to Balaam, offering to reward him if he would the curse the Israelites. After looking to Job, after looking to God about the matter, he replied that God had forbidden him to comply with the request. Balak then sent some messengers of the higher rank with more alluring promises. Sound like the cap, sound like the church today. Sound like Christianity today. When they can't get you one way, they send some more folk in higher position. Won't you come and join our organization? You know, we're going to set you up in a good position. We're going to help you get a good salary. We're going to get all the folk in there you want. We're going to get you hooked up. We're going to set you fight. Hey, we're going, to, we're going to ordain you under the oracles of the chapter of the diocese. <laughs> I'm done tonight. I'm going to pick up more about who Balaam really is. Balaam was really the God who was come from the God Baal. Baal, people God, was really Nimrod. Nimrod, who was later named Baal by his mother. Well, I, I got to stop. I, I don't, my Sabbath is over. I, I've already begun the first day of this new week. I just thank God for those of you that have tuned in with me tonight. I pray that you've gotten something out of part two. The curse of the fathers. You can inbox me. You can message me later. Uh, you can get with me later. Uh, while you're at it, go check out our website. That's tvod.world. T-V-O-D. T, like the letter T, then V-O-D, standing for the voice of deliverance. Our website, tvod.world. Uh, you can share this video. Uh, you can go to our uh, YouTube. This will be uploaded to my YouTube as well. Uh, 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 go back and watch it. Go back and tell some more people to watch it. If you have any problems or any questions with it, you want to address me with it, you can inbox me. I'd be love. I love to sit down and deal with it because it's only the beginning of the curse of our fathers, part two. The curse of our pa fathers, part three, on this generation is coming. Hopefully, I'll try to pick up tomorrow evening again. Uh, uh, neighbor, I pray that somewhere in this message that you've got something out of what I've, God has given me. I'm not done with this. Keep me in prayer. Those of you that are praying that will willfully pray with me, willingly pray with me, honestly pray with me. As I try to get this book, I've been working on this book for several years now. And every time I get ready to send it, the transcript, the manuscripts to a publisher, everything gets just demolished. Because you know why? The devil, Satan, does not want this published in in, in, in in properly in the hands of this world. But I'm going to get it out there this year. I'm going to get it out there. But while I'm getting it out there, I'm going to keep on spitting it out by way of Periscope, by way of Facebook, by way of YouTube, by way of preaching from the pulpit. I'm going to preach it in the street. I'm going to preach it wherever I go. Amen? Amen. Look, I, look, look this is Apostle and Prophet C.R. Gibbs the second, a.k.a. Apostle G., You've been tuned into the voice of deliverance. 
Look, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, sow a seed. Go to our website. I'll tell you how to sow a seed. You can go to our cash app, sow a seed. Uh, just be a blessing. Amen. Look, until part three, this is apostle and prophet C.R. Gibbs saying five days, five Saturdays, five Sundays in the month of December of 2018. There's a spiritual revelation behind this, but there's also something that is going to be deeper than you can imagine that's going to take place in 2019. Are you ready? Are you ready? Well, neighbor, this is Apostle and Prophet. C.R. gives a second again saying, I thank God for every one of you uh, that it fouled with me. Uh, by way of Periscope, by way of YouTube, uh, until uh, the next broadcast. So many times you've been alone, child. I leave you with this. I've been crying out. Somebody tonight. I've been crying out. Have you really been crying for the real Yeshua? Do you hear the... Has your heart really been crying? Has your spirit really been crying to know the truth? Because Jesus Christ is saying only true worshipers can come in. Only true worshipers. Won't you let him in your heart tonight? Won't you let him in your heart on this first day of the first day of the, the last month of 2018? Won't you let him in? He's calling to you. He's calling. Yes. Open your hearts tonight. Open your hearts tonight. Father, I just thank you tonight. By the blood of Yeshua, I come before your throne of grace. I put your blood covering over those that follow this broadcast, those that watch this telecast, those that will share it. I put a blood covering over them, open their eyes to see, their ears to hear, their minds to sit down and, 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 and graft this message. Let them open up a hunger like never before in this last month of this year. Father, I put the blood covering over them. Watch over their loved ones. Open their eyes to see, their ears to hear, and bring them back into the Part three of the curse of the fathers. And until then, Lord, I pray that you watch over them this night. Keep them in the mighty name of Yeshua. I thank you right now. Bless you. Abba Father. Bless them. Amen. 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 God bless you, neighbor. God bless every one of you. Until the next broadcast. This is Apostle G saying, see you and bless you. Amen.